Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shadi Aqil. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today Al Sakhir Palace, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and Commander in Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force, the BDF, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, where they discuss future plans to develop all BDF weapons and units in the presence of the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa and Royal Court Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. His Majesty hailed the efforts of the BDF in maintaining national and cultural gains, its development march, and defending the country and the security of its people. The meeting discussed local issues that aim to serve the National Action March and contribute to the development of various sectors in the Kingdom. During the meeting, His Majesty noted the achievements of Bahrain and its people in various development fields, affirming the importance of continuing to adopt programs and plans and employ all resources and possibilities to meet the aspirations of citizens and residents, as well as develop all services provided by state institutions. His Majesty the King expressed thanks and appreciation for the efforts of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and their constant support to develop government work in order to achieve more national gains. His Majesty affirmed the importance of reinforcing Bahrain's competitive status, developing various vital sectors and doubling its return on the growth of the Bahraini economy according to the principles of competitiveness, sustainability and equity of the Bahrain Economic Vision 2030. His Majesty the King also praised the Bahraini citizens' keenness to strengthen Bahrain's pioneering status among other countries. The Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, received His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa in the presence of the Kuwaiti Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah and the Kuwaiti Prime Minister Sheikh Jabr Al Mubarak Al Hamad Al Sabah. His Royal Highness noted the status of the Emir of Kuwait in the Gulf and the Arab world highlighting his role in maintaining regional security and stability. His Highness Amir of Kuwait expressed his country's pride in His Royal Highness's visit for its Gulf and Arab status. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the Amir of Kuwait expressing appreciation to the enhanced the deep-rooted brotherly relations. During the meeting, the two sides discussed the course of the brotherly relations and their development. His Highness Amir of Kuwait and His Royal Highness the Prime Minister emphasized the importance of enhancing coordination meetings to boost relations. His Royal Highness asserted that the current circumstances require stronger cooperation and a unified stance. The two parties also discussed various regional and international topics and their effect on the region. His Royal Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to Kuwait for their supportive stances and their warm welcome and hospitality, which reflects the advanced level of bilateral cooperation. His Highness Emir of Kuwait held a lunch banquet in honor of His Royal Highness in his accompanying delegation and the presence of the Kuwaiti Crown Prince, Pr Prime Minister and a number of senior officials.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa arrived in Kuwait for a brotherly visit, where he will meet the Mir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, the Kuwaiti Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, and the Kuwaiti Prime Minister Sheikh Jabr Al Mubarak Al Hamad Al Sabah to discuss a number of topics that aim to enhance Bahraini Kuwaiti relations and bilateral cooperation. His Royal Highness was received at the at the airport by his Kuwaiti counterpart, deputy premiers and a number of senior officials in Kuwait, the Bahrain ambassador to Kuwait and the embassy staff. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister delivered a statement in which he expressed pleasure in the visit, which comes in line of the historic and deep-rooted relation between the two countries. He affirmed that the visit is the result of His Royal Highness's keenness on maintaining communication with the Emir of Kuwait and the Kuwaiti government to boost bilateral relations and to discuss the regional international developments as well as topics of mutual interest. His Royal Highness expressed pride in the Kuwaiti Emir's keenness on boosting bilateral relations and for his support to the Gulf Cooperation Council's march, hailing the Kuwaiti Emir's initiatives to serve humanity regionally and internationally. His Royal Highness conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King and the Bahraini government to the Emir of Kuwait and the Kuwaiti government and people. The Prime Minister also stated that the visit is an opportunity to meet the Kuwaiti Crown Prince and Prime Minister to discuss the course of bilateral cooperation. His Royal Highness commended the development and advancement of Kuwait, wishing the country progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa departed Kuwait and was bid farewell by the Prime Minister of Kuwait, Deputy Prime Ministers, Kuwaiti senior officials and Bahrain's ambassador to Kuwait as well as embassy staff.
Earlier today, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa departed the Kingdom of Bahrain on a brotherly visit to Kuwait. His Royal Highness was seen off by the Deputy Prime Ministers and senior officials. His Royal Highness was accompanied by the royal family members, speakers of the representative and shura councils, and senior officials. The personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity, Work and Youth Affairs, the President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa announced the participation of his camel in the King Abdulaziz Camel Festival, which is held under the patronage of the custodian of the Two Holy Mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Highness affirmed that the participation comes under the directives of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa in support of Bahraini and GCC heritage. He added that the festival carries a number of noble goals regarding GCC heritage in general and Saudi heritage in particular. His Highness said the participation aims to support heritage and tradition and shows the current and future generations the importance of heritage. He pointed out that the patronizing of the custodian of the two holy mosques will further motivate the participants. The, Minister of, rather, the Ministry of Finance announced its commitment to implement the value-added tax in 2018 within the framework of the joint commitment of the GCC countries, based on the decisions of the GCC leaders and the signing of the Unified VAT Agreement. The government will take the necessary measures in cooperation with the legislative authority to pass the VAT law and introduce it to the private sector and commercial enterprises while ensuring the necessary logistical and technical preparations. This comes after the adoption of similar measures to apply the tax on selective goods, the implementation of which started at the end of December 2017 and includes tobacco, soft drinks and energy drinks. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain urges all citizens to refrain under any circumstances from traveling to the Islamic Republic of Iran due to the widespread unrest, unstable security conditions and severe violence in the cities of Iran. The ministry calls upon all Bahraini citizens in Iran to leave immediately and to take utmost care and caution. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Mohammed Youssef. Bahrain All Share Index closed at 1,322.04 points, marking a decrease of 9.68 points below last closing. The decrease was in the commercial banks and services sectors, and investors traded mainly in the commercial banks with 84.78% of total shares. 89 transactions included 5,220,097 shares, worth 687,042 Bahraini dinars. In accordance with the signing of the Unified Value Added Tax, the GCC countries are beginning to implement the new agreement. More in this report. The Ministry of Finance of the Kingdom of Bahrain announced its commitment to implement the Value Added Tax in 2018 within the framework of the joint commitment of the GCC countries based on the decisions of the GCC leaders and the signing of a unified VAT agreement. The government will take the necessary measures in cooperation with the legislative authority to pass the VAT law 
and introduce it to the private sector and commercial enterprises, while ensuring the necessary logistical and technical preparations. Meanwhile, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia began in 2018 to advance the economic reform program by implementing eight economic measures. The implementation of VAT on most goods and services is the first procedure Saudi Arabia began in its implementation at the beginning of the new year, followed by the introduction of an updated tariff for electricity bills. The other measures were to raise the fees of the entrance to 200 rials, to welcome foreign investors, to settle the reporting of money laundering, to eliminate the minimum housing allowance, and to install safety barriers for trucks with a fine of up to 5 rials in case of violation. The UAE's Ministry of Finance issued today the first VAT inclusive purchase order and approved the first VAT invoice on its federal financial system. The milestone for the UAE's tax system follows the launch of value-added tax yesterday. The ministry recently announced that the federal financial system has been updated and is ready to manage all VAT-related financial transactions. Over the past months, the Ministry of Finance and the Federal Tax Authority have held a series of workshops and practical training sessions for users of the federal financial system to prepare them for the new implementation. Meanwhile, Oman's Ministry of Finance has reportedly postponed the implementation of the VAT until 2019, as the delay is expected to provide businesses in Oman with more time to adequately prepare.